Welcome to the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nedling. You are about to discover impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you, so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Be sure you visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now tune in, get ready, and enjoy the journey of emerging as a leader of exception in the 21st century. Welcome everyone to the Find Your Leadership Confidence podcast. I'm your host, Vicki Nethling coming to you from Roswell, Georgia. The goal of this podcast is to bring topics and guests that will empower you to become that confident leader and take your business and your life to the next level. Today, I am pleased to have Lolita Gorin as my guest. And let me tell you a little bit about Lolita. She wants you to be ready to get inspired and So she is a four-time number one best-selling author. She talks about and coaches stress management, and she is one dynamic speaker. Through her journey, she has discovered the powerful drug-free stress management strategies, emphasizing the importance of healing childhood trauma. As the founder of Be Amazing You, she dedicates to is dedicated to reducing burnout and boosting energy. So let us have a great conversation about resilience, stress management, and unlocking your full potential. Please join me in talking about bur- beyond burnout strategies for workplace stress and self care. I am very pleased to have you as we chatted before the session's uh, recording started that this is a topic that is really relevant right now. It is the holidays. We're going to, at the time this is airing, it's just after the holidays and everybody is rushing, rushing to try to uh, meet the New Year's resolutions and the goals and things like that. And we tend to get stressed out, we tend to get burned out, and we tend to not do any self-care. Um, maybe for a little bit there for the first maybe a couple of weeks when we say, we're going to lose weight, we're going to eat right, we're going to do things, and then life happens and we forget about um, ourselves. So I'm so excited to chat with you on this subject. But before we get into that, I always ask the easy question, which is please share where you live so um i live currently in houston and i've been in houston for 23 years and um, you probably can hear a little accent i have and i came you had a little one um i came from lithuania Mm. um yeah yeah, 23 years ago i cannot believe it's time flying so fast um, and I was not really a stress management coach. Obviously, I didn't wake up one day and said, hey, I'm going to be a coach. No, I came <laughs> from a very scientific background and um, I majored in geography. So when uh-huh. I came to the U.S., I was, you know, making maps. So and I'm making maps with software for those who are thinking, yes. oh, do you do this Google thing? I'm like, no, I make maps for the reports on using software like, you know, there's so many things done on computer these days. and what happened that I really uh, put myself through a lot to achieve my American dream. And, you know, you don't have to be from another country to be uh, seeking for your American dream. Yes. You know, there's so much of a possibilities in this country that if you just work hard and then you prove yourself and others that you can do it, you can succeed. And that's where I was. And I think probably a lot of your listeners uh, can relate because we, have so much that we can achieve that we constantly push ourselves and you know and it's not that only the people who have their own business or who work for somebody else are stressed out um single mothers or just mothers staying at home who don't even have work to go to they have the workplace well guess what as soon as they step out of the bed that's their workplace yeah so there's so many um people especially now 
uh, found a home as a workplace as well. Uh, because after pandemic, we just got used to staying at home and thinking, yay. So the, the kids became your uh, co-workers <laughs> and your pets <laughs> became your co-workers as well. Um, and, you know, I, I published uh, two, the last books that I published are uh, stress related and across stress while you work. I published a few years back. Um, and I was just talking on another podcast like last week and, and I said, you know, this book is still good, even if it says the workplace, because you don't be, you don't have to be in the office. You can be in your mm-hmm. living room, on your, on your, in your kitchen and, uh, your workplace is your home, but it it still shows how you manage your stress and what can you do about it to help you with your burnout. Yeah. It's very interesting way before the pandemic in probably around 2006 or seven, maybe 2007, um, the company that I worked with was doing a pilot for working from home two days a week. (laughs) Wow. And, And you couldn't choose Monday or Friday. And it was interesting. So I was in the pilot and I did, um, was able to adjust very well, but it was two interesting things out of that one there were people that were in the pilot that asked to not be in the pilot because they couldn't take the loneliness of being at home that was a different kind of stress for them they needed the camaraderie but the other thing was there were people that had small children um and they wanted to be in in to have that same benefit of working from home and for me I, all my kids were grown at the time I, I was doing it. And I thought, there's no way you can do this. <laughs> you cannot be a mom. And it, and then the pandemic happens. And it was like, oh, I can't tell you how many calls I took from people. And they're like, oh, my God, I have to do everything. And I have to. And so they were cutting out the things in their life that actually took them away from the stress instead of keeping that and cutting out some of the other stressful things. But, you know, you have to let them make their own decision. Uh, Talk to me a little bit more about um, what is it that even when you exercise, even if you are eating healthy and and maintaining a truly healthy lifestyle, (laughs) life is tough. It's challenging. So um, I can share a little bit of my story when, you know, I was already saying that when I came to this country, I was working mm-hmm. very hard and doing overtime and all of this. Um, and it really impacted my body so much and just messed up all my hormones. And I, you know, had to deal with the health issues. Uh, really, I was like in the, my mid thirties and I was like, are you kidding me? I cannot be sick. I'm, I'm like in thirties, I'm supposed to be healthy. I cannot be falling apart. This makes no sense. <laughs> And you know, I had friends, they will say, oh, just go to a doctor, get yourself a pill, you'll be fine. And I'm like, what pill are you talking about? I'm not going to medicate myself. I'm, I was not like depressed or something that can pop mm-hmm. a pill and get my mood up. I was just burnt out and mm-hmm. I needed to do all those things. And just, and it was just like, oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. I also was mentally exhausted. And I was not taking care of myself well, because then, you know, when you work 10, 12 hours a day, there's no time to exercise. You just come back home and you just collapse in bed and, and, and do it tomorrow next, the same thing. And the health and nutrition, I was working through lunch hours and, you know, whatever is a <laughs> cold pizza and the donuts in the break room, that's what, what I will eat. Mm-hmm. But then when my health really, you know, just like I got to emergency room, I realized, okay, I need to stop doing this. So I started, um, you know, those staples of, of stress management. You just take breaks. You meditate, you do yoga, all of those things, you know. And, um, you know, and I realized there was obviously something missing in the whole thing. Because if when you're on the phone and let's say you're talking with a client or somebody or a supervisor and they're yelling at you, you're not going to, you know, that's stressful, right? And there's no way you're going to tell them, wait a minute, I'm going to go do my yoga for 30 minutes and I'll be right back. <laughs> you know, he's like, you don't. Um, and so... But again, it helped me a lot. Like it helped me a lot with the stress management uh, because the stress management like has to do with the time management. 
I will be like, okay, from, you know, I, here is from this time to this time, I'm going to work on this project. From two to three, I'm going to do emails. And uh, also another good tip, uh, and, and always, I always do this exercise. When I start uh, talking to um, crowds, you know, I say I, I do uh, lunch and learns and, and I, um, I I start talking and I say, okay, everybody now raise your hand. And and I tell you when you can put it down. And they, you know, this the, all everybody's holding the hands and, uh, after like, you know, two, three minutes, uh, there are some people, they like, they're putting their hands down because it hurts them, right? And I keep talking. And then I get those angry uh, faces looking at me like, when are we going to put my hand down? And then they say, ha, ah, is it painful? That's stressful, right? So the really the key is it doesn't matter where you are. You can be at home. You can be in the in, in office, you know, if we're really talking just about the work. Yeah. Right. Uh, it has to do, do you take a break? So yeah. if you raise your hand and then you put it down and then take a break and then you raise your hand again. So when you, you cut this in, uh, into chunks and then, yeah. and I'm sure you heard about Pomodoro uh, principle that you, let's say you work 45 minutes and then you take 15 minutes off or you work 15 minutes and, you know, and then take 10, 10 minutes off or whatever it is. I recommend just really working with your flow, how it's more comfortable for you and, and finding this, this comfortable place where uh, you take a break. And mm -hmm. one of my favorite is we can put on your phone alarm and every hour it rings and then you stop whatever you're doing. Of course, again, disclaimer, do not do this while you're driving, operating heavy machinery, <laughs> but <laughs> you just, you just stop whatever you're doing and you just close your eyes and just tell yourself, this is my moment just i'm mm -hmm. just gonna breathe in breathe out and i'm just stopping just taking that pause itself it gives you also the feeling that you're taking care of yourself you're honoring your needs you're handling your burnout and obviously you'll be much healthier and not so burnout at the end of the day and when i coach my clients i ask them to do a diary and make you know have those those check marks and you know how many breaks did you do and everything and you can you can see how your energy is so much better at the end of a day because you gave yourself a little break mm -hmm. so what what are the so so here's the thing what they realized um you can do like you said you can have great nutrition you can do your exercises you can do your yoga you write your diaries you do your meditation you do all of those things but you're still not where you want, where you want to be. And this revelation really came to me when I was reading one of the books, How to Manage Business. Because when I uh, became a stress management coach, and that was like 10 years ago, you know, I, I was like that person that was uh, wearing all the hats in the company. You know, I'm an <laughs> entrepreneur, I'm going to do the marketing, I'm going to do emails, I'm, you know, networking, you know, I do it all. Um, in the one of the books I was reading, the author of the book said um, that she read the book called um, uh, about um, adult children of alcoholics. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about her father who was alcoholic. And, you know, it's just, I was like, wait, wait a minute. My dad is alcoholic too. And I went and I found that book and I read it. And it finally, everything fall into place. Mm -hmm. And now those who are listening in right now and they tell and they're already thinking, oh, wait, I don't have to listen to this podcast anymore because I don't have childhood trauma. I grew up in a very happy environment and I had no <laughs> addicts in my family. I will ask you to, to hold on uh, because we all have childhood trauma. Yeah, some of us have smaller, some of us are bigger. You know, it, it, it depends what happened really to you. But, you know, when I find out that actually even... Even a, a baby that's being put in the crib uh, from too high, like bounces off the bed, that's already childhood trauma. A small one, but it's already uncomfortable, right? What is the stress? Stress is everything out of sight, our normal, right? Mm -hmm. Like I said, you raise your hand, you hold it, it's, it's, it's painful. Stress. So when your needs are not met, uh, but those who are around you, and living on this planet, we have plenty of needs not met. I think that's the fun part of the human experience. <laughs> uh, we uh, have a tendency of really stressing out. And when you're a child, you're preparing yourself when you're an adult, how you're going to act. So when I read that book, I realized that I was actually stressed out a lot. 
and I was very hyper vigilant and uh, constantly anxious uh, because of my upbringing. And I noticed, and I start noticing when I was in the room, and let's say we had presentation and something happened, or whatever, something that involves other people in the room, and there is some news said or whatever, or like, hey, we need to have a deadline now, it's not in a month, but in two weeks, you know. And I will be immediately jumping and it's like, oh my gosh, what I'm going to do? This is this is tragic. This is the end of the world. The other coworkers will be just like, oh, okay, well, nobody will die. And I was like, how can, how can you be not so responsible? We're supposed to be. And then I realized, why am I behaving like this? Because really stress, it really depends on you, how you handle it. Mm -hmm. It's about you are the one who's really stressing you. And I know, I know probably a lot of say, well, how, what do you mean? My coworker sucks. My kids are crazy. My, my spouse doesn't listen to me. I'm sure you heard by now. It's uh, you allowing them to do that to you, mm -hmm. right? Right. And why do we allow this to do it? Well, because a lot of time, just pure out the survival. And us as humans, we belong to a group. We need other people. Um, and even those very extra introverted, they still do need people. Um, sometimes, but we, we still are herd animals that we regulate emotionally mm -hmm. with other individuals. Uh, so we naturally want to please, right? And then when we are born, we really need to be taken care of. Otherwise we die. Mm -hmm. So we become this, and then especially if you grew up in this functional family where you didn't get uh, your needs met, you felt like you were not enough. Uh, you felt like invalidated or gaslight constantly and, or, or somebody will tell you how you need to feel or you say, I'm hungry, and they tell you, well, no, you're not, it's fine. Um, you know, all of those things really mm -hmm. adds up. And yeah. all the childhood trauma really happens up to when you're seven years old. And then after that, you just keep on repeating. So when I realized that mm, the way I acted and the person that was stressing me out, it was me. Mm -hmm. Now, then my life really changed. And I was like, aha. And that was the last piece that then moved me forward, how I can manage the stress in, in, in no matter what environment that is. Yeah, that's so very true. And and I think a lot of people push back, push aside all those things, those memories, they think, but they're there in our subconscious and, and that subconscious is so much stronger and um and it really does come out. Um can you share some more coping strategies that if you've got that workplace stress or, or stress from the home um, that will keep you from perhaps, if not preventing, but maybe downplaying the, the burnout that you will be experiencing if you don't do anything? Uh, yes. So the first number one thing that I realized what worked for me and, and other clients that any change happens, I think, two ways. Or you're so inspired to change or you're so in pain that you yeah, have to yeah. change. Uh, most of the time, the pain comes when you're just physically ill because, you know, body keeps the score. So uh, you keep on accumulating that stress, yeah. that burnout, yeah. that anxiety. And then the body says, you know what? I, I cannot handle it anymore. Now, it's impossible to really live all your life without experiencing stress. And right. we would never want that because we need the expansion. We need to experience something in order to understand what's, what does this all means and that's the beauty of life but the problem that we have we don't know how to handle that uh we cannot just switch off the the button and say hey you know you know i'm, I'm sure you heard by now it's like well the gazelle this is just eating the grass and there's a lion then the lion's chasing the gazelle and she's all stressed out she's running and then the lion's gone and then gazelle's like, okay the lion's gone and now she's eating grass again and she's fine our brain does not work that way. And especially if you grew up with the childhood trauma, you will be constantly hyper vigilant of thinking what's going to happen to you next. Right. So how do you manage, you know, that kind of burnout? Burnout really happens because you're constantly on. You mm -hmm. are constantly on. You're constantly anxious about the mm -hmm. multiple things in your life, about personal things, about your family, friends, your work, your your, your projects. And, and if you come from the dysfunctional family, one of the things um, I always recommend is to to start toning down the things because things are not that bad as they seem. Yeah. So 
um, I, I have a story. Um, I remember I was working for the company and the supervisor came to me and then he says, um, can we talk to you for a second? Let's go to conference room. Mm-hmm. Well, me being with <laughs> trauma, I'm like, this, this is, oh, this, this is bad. I am, uh, this is bad. This is like, like a week before Christmas. Oh. I'm like, oh no, this, this is bad. So when I sit down and obviously I'm expecting all in the worst and he starts with saying, hey, okay, so, you know, this is the end of the year and we were looking at the profit lines and I'm thinking, okay, here you go. And they're like, yeah, and then we, we see how many projects we have now and how many projects we will, you know, they're coming up and I'm like, here you go, here you go. And it's like, and we know how much you work, what's your workload is. And I'm like, okay, there you go. They're not going to justify him keeping me around. And then he says, we're giving you a raise. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow. I mean, I couldn't believe it. And then I left the conference room and I was thinking, wow. And look at me. The whole time I was going to see him, I was thinking I was getting fired. So you see, I stressed myself out. Yeah. Nobody was stressing me, me, myself. But why? Because I grew up with childhood trauma where mm-hmm. I always constantly was afraid that the worst things will happen to me. I was already mentally preparing myself for those things to happen so I would know how to manage and survive. Um, so we always, you know, can think about when is the shoe will drop, you know, or, or something looks good. We're like, no, nah, this is too good to be true. What is yeah. behind that? <laughs> you know, like, ah, then now let's investigate this. So this this is all that stress that's that's uh, accumulating really mentally that we burn ourselves out. Okay. Um, so so how do you prepare yourself for let's say um, a- any anything that you are let's say uh, stressing out or or anxious about the future? Let's say somebody inviting you like meeting like this. What do you do right away? So I always recommend my clients to do to to start writing down little things like uh, reminders or just create a list and uh, try to remember situations in in all your life whatever you as long as you can remember where you're expecting the things to go the bad like just bad just yeah. worse like like you were thinking like in my situation I'm gonna get fired and then right next to it what it really happens. Mm-hmm. Because our brain has a tendency of always remembering the, the bad things. You know, it's just survival. But the good things, we have, eh, it's, not, it's like, okay, well, it's good. It's not a big deal. So we, we put this aside. So when you manually write this down, and, and if you say, well, gosh, I cannot remember anything. That's fine. Start writing this list now. So when something happens, right away, write it down. So then you will accumulate this list. So the next time, when let's say, you're taking up new project and you're thinking, I don't think I'm going to be delivering this. I don't think this is going to happen. I don't think I'm going to pass the test. I don't think I'm going to have clients. I don't think I'm going to whatever, whatever. Start reading that list. And because you need to tell your brain that it's okay. You were there before and you were thinking you will not be getting it, but guess what? You got it. So the more you have on that list, the more you calm yourself. And you know, and that's why so many times we need friends to go to talk to, especially women, because we manage stress by talking with other people, because we want them to tell us that, hey, everything is going to be okay, right? That's all we need to hear, that somebody assure us that we'll be fine. So when you have that list, you're assuring yourself. You remind your brain that, hey, that can be pretty good. You don't have to freak out now. So that that is one thing. Um you know, there's something came to my mind that was fascinating. Um, so, so there was this uh, research done and basically says that the brain, so let's say you grow up in the environment that you always became anxious when something was happening that, you know, was stressful or out of your normal, you became anxious. So then you survived, right? Like I just told you, you were expecting the worst, but you survived. Your brain thinks Oh, okay. Ha. Huh. So me stressing out and being anxious actually keeps me alive. <laughs> so then next time something happens, your brain says, Oh, I got it. I got it. We're going to be anxious right now. So we can survive. And I think that's really messed up. But isn't that explains a lot? Yeah. So we start using this stressed out as a mechanism to survive. And we think that this is actually helping us. Um, 
So there's a, also a simple exercise that, uh, let's say, how you can re regulate um, your, your stress and you can be actually anywhere or like something happens very fast and out of control. Um, I think POTS are just like a heavy train, right? Like when it starts moving, it's, it's, it's very slow. But as soon as you start thinking more and more, just kind of picks up the speed and it's very hard to stop your negative thinking mm -hmm. or your anxious thinking. So I recommend my clients to do a few things. The first, you need to acknowledge that you're stressing out. Yeah. Like it, it can be hard, but with some practice, you will notice like, oh my gosh, I'm stressing out. Okay, I know what to do now. And then to stop your thinking, your negative thinking, start thinking, you know, like uh, repeat affirmations in your mind. You know, you yeah. can have affirmations. I am calm, collected, whatever. Mm -hmm. Or you have like a Bible verse or something. Something yeah. that you can grab right away. And look, we all have phones these days. Have something nice written on your screen, for example. I I, I had for the longest time on my phone screen, um, have faith, everything is okay. And I will look at it and just kind of calm myself. So, and then, so you, you put your thoughts and you're continuously thinking and you're calming yourself to get, not to allow those negative thoughts to come to your mind. Then it's very important to breathe. And I yes. know, I know it was like, oh, breathing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know this already, mm -hmm. but how many times do we hold the breath? Mm -hmm. So you breathe in and you breathe out. So yes. when you slow your breathing, you know, your brain and your heart comes down and it kind of says to your body, hey, I'm not running. Everything is okay. Because when you run, you you, you just get faster, faster, faster breathing. And then when, when you calm your breathing, then the brain says, hey, we're safe. And then next next thing, it's important to touch your body. And I know, I mean, probably listeners thinking, what did she just say to touch your body? Yes, I said that. You know, uh, did you notice that usually kids, when they when they feel stressed out or something happens, they like run for the hug because we naturally want to be touched. Our brain calms itself when you, you, you're you touching mm -hmm. your body. So you can give yourself a hug or you just massage your neck or massage your fingers. You could be sitting in a meeting with a bunch of people and just massage your fingers. That's it, you're touching yourself. You just, let's say you have a presentation, something or you need to talk, you just breathe in, breathe out. Keep on telling yourself some good positive things and just to touch your feeling, to touch your fingers or underneath the table or something. And you will calm yourself. Like and and you know, I would think in like three to five minutes, you will feel better. Also, when you start using this, your brain says, Ah, okay, this is what I'm going to do the next yeah. time I stressed out. Mm -hmm. So instead of stressing out, you train yourself, and the more you use that, um, more you trust yourself. So you can get the control of the situation faster. And then when you're calmer, then you can make decisions. Then you can do some other things. And that I think is very important like, to do that, 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 that stopping. And there's one thing uh, that's very important of doing any change is knowing that you are worthy of change. Mm -hmm. And that is what changed everything for me, what really came to any life goals or stress management as we're talking about uh, stress management right now. Because if you don't believe that you are worthy of yeah. your health, of uh, your happiness, of your goals, you are not going to be achieving that. So, um, and I always say, start with yourself because you cannot pour out of empty glass. And especially for those people who they constantly telling me, I don't have time for this. I'm like, just take one minute, a break. And they tell me, oh, you don't understand. I'm a single mother with two kids. I'm running a business. <laughs> I don't have time for this. And I said, you think you will have time when you'll be in the hospital? That's Who's going right. to take care of those kids then? That's right. So you always need to give yourself that first so you can give to others. I think some, in some ways, um, stress we bring upon us by a, a mechanism we think is is keeping stress away actually is bring it on. And that's a controlling mechanism. Like I always have to be in control. I, I, you know, I have to be that person and everything has to be perfect. And that adds so much stress to us. Where as if you, as you mentioned earlier, if you just get that attitude that <laughs> eh, I'm not going to die from this, or <laughs> I always say, if I don't die or I don't go to jail, it's a good thing. And, <laughs> and, it took me until I was in my fifties 
in that corporate world to just get to the point. Is like, what are you stressing about? And, you know, I, I, I saw my daughter in her early motherhood days and everything was bothering her. And I kept on thinking, did I not teach you anything in life? <laughs> But it was because she was trying to be like the Joneses and and be this perfect mom in this ideal Instagram kind of situation. And and it just doesn't have to be that way. I, I like, um, I heard someone says, um, looking at the, looking at the um, social media posts of the people is like looking at the brochure of our all-inclusive resort when it's just being built. Um, it's like it looks amazing pictures are beautiful the the food looks delicious everybody's young and beautiful in the pictures and then you get there and you're like oh my gosh this has like been 20 years ago it, it, 20 years ago maybe that's what it was um, and I think um, especially now when we look at um, so much on social media everybody's trying to be so perfect because we are afraid to be excluded from the group. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's like, oh, if everybody's jumping through the window, I'm, I'm going to be jumping too because I don't want to be left <laughs> behind. Um, and, it's, and also what has to do with um, being overachiever and workaholic. Um, I, I really like uh, Dr. Uh, Gabor Mate said that um, he if you didn't feel like you were wanted or supported when you were growing up, um, you may think, okay, uh, they don't love me the way I am, so I'm going to become useful. Mm -hmm. So then you keep on working harder and harder to prove yourself, and then you become people pleaser. You constantly uh, do everything else what others want you to do, and you even can talk yourself into doing things and thinking that that's very good for you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, um, what, what you just mentioned that we stress ourselves, even with the stress management techniques, I had the client that I recommended her just to um, color, you just buy some pencils and a coloring book and yeah. just give herself at least 10 to 15 minutes every day to, you know, like color a page or just a little, just, just something for her brain to relax and calm down before she goes to sleep. Mm -hmm. And after two weeks, she told me that, um, he just cannot do it and and, uh, and uh, it's putting her for too much stress because she can because she's such a high achiever she cannot go to sleep now before she finishes the whole <laughs> thing going. and I'm like that's not the purpose <laughs> because she's such a high achiever you know she needs to finish whatever she starts and so you know in any situation really uh, when you catch yourself, you know, and I, I'm invite all your listeners right now to think about situation in your life that you that is stressful to you, um, and obviously you trying to make it into a different place. You know, like uh, you, it's it's not happening. You may be pushing it to happen, or you're trying your best, uh, but this just looks like this mountain just doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself one question, and and my coaching clients hate that question. Um, <laughs> ask yourself one question. How is this serving you? Yeah. Because we are all operating from the survival point of view. Mm -hmm. right. And something that is totally detrimental or actually looks like totally working against us, it's actually saving us somehow. Mm -hmm. So when you're struggling with something, ask yourself, how is this serving me? Maybe, you know, and, and, I, and I coach a lot of entrepreneurs and they tell me, I'm working so hard uh, to, uh, to, to achieve my dream and, and make all this money. And, and I don't know, just can, can I get it? And I'm like, how do you think it's serving you? And then they really start thinking about, oh, well, if I will uh, be successful and have all this money, then that's mean I will want to expand and then I'm going to be working more and or <laughs> I will be going to the office. I'm not going to see my kids. And I, I hate that. I want to be able to see my kids because my dad was always working. So you see, you're holding yourself back, but it doesn't look like that. So that is also the stress that you're really adding into your life mm -hmm. into becoming something that you're not, not you, that's not even you, you know, you, you mm -hmm. want to have very different aspirations, but why are you not allowing yourself to be who you are? Because you're afraid to be excluded. Mm -hmm. So true. Well, we could probably talk for another hour on this topic, uh, and I'll definitely have to have you back so we can chat some more. But it is time now for me to share my screen. 
if you are listening and you are intrigued, interested, and see, oh my God, I need Lolita right now. Um, I have her contact information. So you can do a screenshot if you're watching. If you're listening, go grab that paper and pencil right quick so that you can get the information I will read for you. As always, it is on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe. And you can find it also on my findyourleadershipconfidence.com. You will go to the website, which is https colon forward slash forward slash www.beamazingyou.com. And that's B-E-A-M-A-Z-I-N-G-Y-O-U, beamazingyou.com. Facebook, she's at Be Amazing You with initial caps. Instagram, Lolita underscore Garin, G-U-A-R-I-N. LinkedIn, you can find her using her name because LinkedIn just gives you some strange weird numbers at the end. But again, just look for Lolita dash Garin and then some strange numbers. Um, she is on YouTube at, at Be Amazing You, initial cap again, at Be Amazing You. I'll let Lolita talk to you a little bit about her book, as well as what you can find when you go to her website. Lolita, it's all yours. Uh, well, thank you so much for, for sharing all of this info. And uh, basically, all of this that's already uh, said, you all can find on, on my website. And for those who are interested on uh, coaching, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and also do group coaching. Uh, if uh, you uh, feel like um, I can add to your team for coaching um, how to battle burnout in the workplace. I'll be very happy to do that to do lunch and learns. Also come to a person or we do on Zoom. And uh, there is a speakers tab on my website where you can find more information. Um, I Also on Facebook, as uh, the same as on Instagram, I share quick uh, stress management tips um, because I think if, when we start implementing maybe just a little bit every single day, it's already a moving forward and it doesn't take that long. I say stress management shouldn't be stressful um, yeah. and you just can get some inspiration from there. Also, you can reach me uh, at the uh, Lolita at be amazing you and uh, I also, um, you know, you mentioned about the books I wrote. So the last books um, that specifically are for stress management is that Chris stress while you work. And the latest one that I published this year, it's called Stress Management for Adult Children of Alcoholics. And for your listeners, I am giving this book for free. So um, there is a link that I, I gave to Victoria that would be great if she can post it somewhere with all of this information. Um, I, you know, if somebody's listening right now and say, you know what, I really don't have any alcoholic in my family. So this book has 25 chapters and I really address very um, simple things such as like fear of abandonment or difficulty finding intimate relationships mm -hmm. or, you know, procrastination, uh, things like that, that really um, not necessarily just, you know, characteristic to the children who grew up in a dysfunctional family it has to do with the addicts. But really, anyone who grew up with some sort of childhood trauma where they felt like they were not supported and validated, and like I said before, we all of us are, just some uh, more or less. Um, and, and if you have anyone who you think you can um, benefit from this book and you want to give them a gift, of course, those two books are available on Amazon for purchasing in a hard copy as well. But because this is special, and I do not just give away books like this. It's only when somebody's really on the, on the podcast that they can go to this link and get it for free as a PDF. Okay. And, awesome. uh, and I, I think it's great for a, you even can forward that a link to your friends that they think they can benefit it. Awesome. So again, those of you that are just listening, you can go to my YouTube uh, site or my findyourleadership.com confidence.com to see the link. It will be on the end of this podcast so you could grab that and definitely take advantage of grabbing that link and what a great gift that she's giving us Lolita it's been just wonderful chatting with you uh great conversation you gave so many wonderful tools and tips for the audience and uh, as I said definitely want to have you back so we can chat a little bit more and as always I remind everyone life is a journey and it's up to you to enjoy the ride this is Vicki Nettling, signing off.
Thank you for tuning into the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Medling, where we share impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Remember to visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast.